What is up, people of the YouTube land? I'm Awesome2464, you are my viewers, and this is the Edheads Virtual Knee Surgery. Uh, I'm not doing this alone, actually. I'm doing this with my cousin here, Caden. Say hi, Caden. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he's going to be watching this video because we watched Jacksepticeye's uh, nose surgery thing. This is more of an educational game, like more explaining what's going on and stuff like that. But it's still interesting nonetheless. I played this years ago when I was in middle school. It was a little gross then, but it's been a while since I've played this. But he's never seen this before, so I thought I might as well just give it a shot. And if there's time at the end, we can check this out of real photos from a knee surgery, if you want. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Virtual surgery. Oh, and by the way, um, viewers, I only played the arm surgery... So, I'm in for a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, please turn on speakers and plug in headphones. All right, let's go. Welcome to Virtual Knee Surgery. Right. This activity will show you the process of replacing a failing knee joint. All right. Are you ready? Today, our patient is a 76-year-old man. Oh. It is Fantastic. mandatory to check the patient's vital signs before beginning surgery. An anesthesiologist in the operating room performs this step. If the patient's vital signs are not in the normal ranges, we will not proceed with the surgery. Using the healthy person's vital sign chart as a reference, can our patient undergo surgery today? Uh, let's see. Uh, the person's should, uh, temperature should be between 97 and 99. All right. Mm, that's between that. Uh, between 60 and 100. Yep. Uh, yep. You're looking all good. I'd say so. It looks like surgery will proceed as planned. Sweet. Take a moment to look at our patient's x-rays. Right. Which knee do you think needs surgery? Which knee do you think needs the surgery? The left knee? Yes. You're right. His left knee appears worn down and lacking cartilage, Got which right. is likely the cause of his pain. The nurse has begun prepping our patient for surgery by placing an IV needle in his right hand. Now it's your turn. Use the marker and write your initials on the proper knee to be operated on. Uh. This may seem silly, but it's an actual step taken to prevent wrong site surgeries. That's a smart idea, marking which one needs stuff. So let's do C, G, and then C, H. That way, they know it's both of us. Yeah, Caden, he goes, good rich. Yep. The anesthesiologist administers drugs through the IV and through a mask over the patient's face. What function should these drugs perform? Uh, what should the gas mask stuff do? Um, kill pain. Kill pain. Uh, you... No. Oh, oh. How dare oh, that's you? right, because you should, well, hmm. relax and make the patient happy. Fantastic. Okay, so that's yeah. one. Uh, Anti-inflammatory to prevent the leg from swelling. Uh, I don't know. Uh. Patient forget the surgery. Great. And keep the patient from moving, yes. Good work. That's a smart idea. You don't want them moving while After the patient is unconscious, oh, he's and naked. before the first incision is made, we need to establish a sterile field around the surgical area. Uh, a series of sterile drapes isolates the surgical field from the rest of the patient's body. Uh -huh. A tourniquet is applied to cut off blood flow, which allows a clearer view of the surgical field during surgery. So there's no blood everywhere. To kill the bacteria on the patient's leg, <coughs> clean it in a betadine solution. This scrubbing process will limit the chance of bacterial infection. So basically just cleaning his leg. Make it all brown like caramel. <laughs> Nice. Betadine scrub is applied two more times, two more followed times. by the final arrangement of sterile drapes. Uh, I know where this is going. <laughs> Why do you think knee surgery involves so many drapes? Oh, culturally, because it's a hospital fashion trend. <laughs> I'm kidding. The key to protect the patient from, the, from hard to treat infections. To protect the attack, the or staff from infection. No, not the staff. To protect the patient's too pathetic from harm to a treat patients. Good work. Okay. So to keep her from getting infected. Use the sterile yeah. marker to draw the location for our incision. Oh, and don't forget the to mark the perpendicular the lines part. too. Typically, the incision line is six to seven inches long. So just it's just a marker. I know. Just putting a marker. I'm just saying like after it's gonna be like ugh. Yeah, then we gotta use to make sure we gotta use these, because these are gonna be very important lines. These little short horizontal lines. Yeah. What purpose do you think the perpendicular lines serve? To make it easier to match up the skin when before it's closed. Outstanding. Yeah, you want those lines to match up. Now for the incision. To... Take the scalpel yeah. and cut the skin following your markings. All right. Oh, now no. here comes the surgery part. Ready? All right. Ew, 
is that? Let's use the what bovie pencil to cauterize the veins. <laughs> this will help decrease oh, blood flow into disgusting. the surgical field. <laughs> what is that fat or what? Yeah, that yellow I think stuff? I think that's maybe fat. Now we're gonna cauterize his stuff to, to prevent uh, blood flow. The rake retractors fold the skin and tissue out of the way, exposing Ooh! our patient's knee. Cap. To operate, we need the patient's knee elevated and bent so the bones are fully exposed. Uh, so need a 90 degree angle. Now the leg is at the proper angle. Use the rongeur to remove the anterior Ew. cruciate ligament, or ACL, oh, the meniscus, and any bone disgusting. spurs that may be lurking about. Oh, now we're going to take this and snip parts of his bone off. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Are you a good sculptor? It's time to shape the femur, tibia, and patella so the new knee components fit properly. A hole must be drilled inside the femur to set up the distal oh femoral cutting jig and alignment device. And it's getting so Ladies far. and gentlemen, this is a drill going in to this man's knee. Oh! Oh! <laughs> the jig is put into position and um, helps ensure that the cuts of made to the bone are exactly what are needed. Now hammer in the pins oh, to hold no, the jig. Oh no! Why do we have a mallet? To keep this thing in place. Oh! We can now remove the alignment device. The pins will hold the jig firmly in place. Now for some real bone shaping. Use the bone saw to cut the bone so it is prepared for the new femoral component. And now we're going to cut off part of this, the front of this guy's knee. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it has a mouth talking or something. He's lucky. This, this guy's Another lucky cutting jig, along with the bone yeah. saw, allows us to finish shaping the femur. This is what happens when you have a bad knee. <laughs> Let's move on and shape the tibia. The tibial cutting jig is aligned with the big toe and the highest point of the tibia. This will ensure the leg is properly aligned after surgery. That's a good idea. Secure yeah. the jig in place with more pins. Alright, let's go. How is it not? Use the bone saw to cut off the top of That's the tibia the and prepare the it for the new for. tibial components. Oh. So does it feel pain? Yeah, so he doesn't feel pain. And he may afterwards, but he's not going to feel it while doing the surgery. Cool. Now we'll use the patellar cutting jig and bone saw to remove the back of our patient's patella. Oh, no, now we're going to cut off his kneecap. Oh, oh, oh. Ew. Yeah, that, yeah, that's your kneecap. Ew! <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Holes in the tibia and patella what are, those are drilled white and chiseled dots? out, They're so which will enable the new bone components marrow. to attach properly. That's the bone marrow. Time That's to place the, the trial component. Uh, First, attach the femoral trial component. The femoral component. The trial component. Attach the metal tray trial Ow. component to the tibia. Insert the plastic trial spacer into the metal tray component. Lastly, attach the patellar trial component. Why do you think the two tibial components are inserted separately instead of as one unit? Uh, the plastic spacer can be replaced when it wears out without placing the metal. Fantastic. Usually the longer Conduct answer. a range of motion tests to assure proper knee alignment and successful prosthetic fit. Typically, a normal range of motion allows the leg to move from 0 to 130 degrees. How does our patient's range of motion look? Well, he can bend his arm from 0 to 130, so that's always good. Knees aren't meant to bend sideways, so That's it's good. important to determine whether there is a gap or space between the femoral and tibial components. There is no noticeable gap, so this knee is a good fit. Sweet. Why do you think there are so many steps taken to ensure proper alignment? Uh, Definitely not the knee infection. So, uh, um, so the knee doesn't bend backwards? Nope. Uh, well, that's a good thing to make sure, though. <laughs> we want to make sure your knee doesn't his knee doesn't bend backwards. Bad time to a faulty alignment can produce the complications with the Great. patient. Great. Awesome. We've tested right. the trial components. Now let's remove them and prepare for the permanent components by applying a special cement compound that binds metal and plastic to bone. A scrub technician has mixed up a batch of cement for you to mm. use. All right. The special With cement. the cement in place, the final components are permanently attached to the knee. Any excess cement will be scraped off and thrown away. Lay the leg flat on the table so the new knee components put pressure on each other. This allows the bone and components to bond with the cement. The cement can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to harden. Okay, not too long. We perform our range of motion tests one final time. Looking good. 
Yep. Our patient's new knee is looking good. Let's close up the incision. First, suture the deep tissue and fat layers back together. And let's sew them up. For closing the surface incision, you have a choice between the stapler and the suture. Stapler. Stapler. Do you want to staple his knee instead of sewing it? Yes. Okay. Staple. Oh, it's more weird than I thought it would be. Yeah, that's why it's good to have these lines right here. Yes. What is the primary difference between these two methods of closing the incision? Think of closing. Yeah, those sutures cause less scarring. Excellent. Oh. The stitching you know, cause less scarring. We couldn't ask for a better participant. You've done an excellent job. Are Thank you sure you. this is your first total knee replacement? Sure. Our patient <laughs> will remain in the hospital for three days, followed by three to eight weeks of physical therapy. Because of this surgery, our patient will have significantly reduced pain and increased mobility. Before you leave, let's think about the life of the new knee components. What kind of forces do you think the new knee will need to withstand? The weight of the body? No. Twice what? the weight of the body? Nope. Three times? Nope. Five times the weight of the body? Nice job. <laughs> I'm starting People to People average this about 5,000 steps per day. Oh, five? Our patient's new prosthetics will withstand a great oh, deal of force gotcha. for 36 million steps or more. I'm off to check on another patient while the OR team prepares the room for the next surgery. You've been a great help. See you next time. My jerk. Yay. Well, since we've still got some time, what do you say we um, check out the real photos? Sure. Alright, uh, heads up, this could get really gross. So if you're really squeamish, I look away right about now. Okay, let's go. Alright. Okay, here's the team working ahead. Here's exposing the knee with a fork. <laughs> what the f Siri, why a fork? I don't know. Here's Surgeons. them drilling into the knee. Here's them putting in that jig. It's looking slimy. Really yeah. slimy. Because it's covered in all that bacterial stuff. Oh. Here's them hammering the nins, the pins in. Here's them using a bone saw to cut off the front of the knee. Here's them the bone saw to cut off the front of the knee. Ooh, that's... Total j tibial jig getting attached to the bone. Drilling holes into the bone. <laughs> yeah, Caden's <laughs> over here grabbing his knee. <laughs> uh, it's so disgusting. <laughs> the, the patellar jig ready for the bone saw. Cut. Here's the cut bone. Yeah, they made it less bloody in the game, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely more, way more gory. Attaching from, <clears throat> attaching from moral test component. So they're at uh, attaching the test plastic metal stuff. Uh, testing the tension. Mixing the cement. Oh, yay, less blood glor gore. There's the oh, cement. Nope. There's a cement cut over the bone. Oh, so they, the, it's green in the video, probably, so you can actually see it more better. Yeah. Attaching the final knee components and suturing the skin. And that was disgusting. <laughs> uh, yep, and that is a uh, virtual knee surgery and photos of a real knee surgery. So, Caden, what you think? It was disgusting, and I'm about to go hurl. <laughs> well, please do it in the bathroom, please. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, that does it for Ed Head's virtual knee surgery. Uh, it was nice to go back into that. I mean, it wasn't as bad as I remembered it being. Of course, I'm 17 now, and that was years ago. But, hey, we got an 8-year-old kid here who, yeah, well, you heard what he said, right? <laughs> hey, at least I'm brave enough. <laughs> yes, that is true. At least you didn't hurl all over my laptop, or else you would be in serious trouble. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, so bye. And, anyway, yeah, yeah, shut up, doctor. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this. Um, hopefully, well, I don't know. We might have time for another video sometime, but that's going to wait till next time. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment what you thought, subscribe to my channel for the next part when that's out. Uh, be sure to check out my channel for some of my other videos. And remember to stay awesome. See ya! Bye! -bye.